Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. We are graced with Corey Kavanuski on the show today. Corey, how you doing? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for having me today. Awesome. It's fantastic to have you here. And uh, again, thank you for being so generous with your time. So um, for the viewers, if you wouldn't mind sharing like roughly what your volume looks like in the mortgage business so that we can get a, a the lay of the land and then where you're located. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in Coronado, California, which is uh, a city inside of San Diego. Um, and I lend all over the country, though, so I'm not specifically lending here. Uh, this year, I'll close about 950 units for about 550 million. Wow, that is massive production. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate awesome. that. So um, with you lending all over the country, what does that look like? Are you, do you have branch managers in different locations? Are you out doing that networking? How do you generate that business from out of state? Well, it's mostly database driven. Um, nice. Yeah, so, so it's not as if I'm you know, flying to these different places and throwing events or anything like that. It's, it's really just a matter of me making my database know or, or aware of the fact that I'm able to lend all over the place. And what I've recognized is that when I talk about that, then that business comes in. Hmm. If I don't talk about it, then people assume that I'm not. And in fact, people even assume that I'm not even able to help them outside of maybe Coronado or San Diego. You know, they just, they just make that assumption. Um, but once they know that I can help them anywhere, they start to think about, you know, the second home that they might want to buy, the rental property that they might want to buy, the the son or daughter that might be going to college in that area that maybe yeah. they want to purchase a unit for instead of putting them in a dorm. And, you know, the retirement that they might be thinking about or planning, um, it, it's it's quite interesting. Uh, we do a, quite a bit of, of business outside of the United States. And I'm personally like or outside of uh, San Diego, all over the United States. Um, and I'm personally licensed in about 43 states. So it seems like one is kind of always hot. Um, yeah. We're doing a lot like in Iowa recently, um, mm -hmm. a lot in Texas, a lot in Florida, Virginia, uh, Washington, some other tax, uh, more tax favorable states. Yep. Um, keep in mind too that, you know, I'm in a military community. So the military is constantly moving their members all over the place. And it's oftentimes, you know, just a couple of years they're here and they're moving on to somewhere else. So if we've done a great job for them, then they're in touch about their next move. Hmm. That is amazing. And do you have specific scripting that you use when you're asking for referrals or do you put anything specific in your marketing material to let people know? Yeah, it seems we can't do it enough, um, but, or too much, you know, but yeah, we're, we're kind of constantly reminding people don't forget, we can help you anywhere across the country in our logo. You know, it says your local and national lender um, as if to say, hey, we're, you know, we're local and we're we're here to help and provide you with that sort of local service um, all all across the, the country. Um, and I would I, I think that that's why people are so quick to come to us for business uh, or for loans rather across the country, because they say, well, there's enough you know, stuff that I don't know about wherever it is I'm going. Yeah. If I can keep as much you know, close to home as I can, then why wouldn't I? You know, so if you're buying a house, you know, a second home, let's say in Florida, you, know, you probably don't really know the real estate agent. You probably yeah. don't really know the seller. You probably don't really know the area all that well. You don't know the title. You don't know the escrow. It's all kind of a little foreign to you. And so, you know, you kind of feel good, I think, about having someone you know and you trust on your side, still being able to help you all the way out there. Yeah. Um, so when people come to us for help across the country in different states, they they are like, oh, thank God you can help, you know, and they just feel like it's such a relief. And um, we're, we become the local lender for them, even though we're not local to the property. That is fantastic. And then. Your database sounds like a good portion of your business is coming from the database. What are you doing to keep in touch with the database? What does your database marketing look like? Yeah, well, so I'm a member of the Freedom Club and Ooh. I follow a lot of uh, what, what they've you know, uh, shared with all the, all the members there. And I do, I do a lot of it. I do dialing. Um, so we're doing you know, four, uh, four dials or four calls uh, per year to all of our past clients. Um, which is about 3,000 past clients. So it's a lot of calls wow. uh, to, to make, but we, you know, we use phone burner, we're dialing through that database and we always have a reason to call. So I'm not calling just to say hi, uh, yep. typically. 
um, or, or not even calling really to solicit anything. We're really calling to make sure that our customers understand that we care about them and, and to check in with them about something specific. So for example, you know, we might call and say, hey, you know, we've found that a lot of our clients are underinsured in a real estate market where home values have gone up, you know, by 30% over the past two years. Yep. Um, have you revisited this or are you just paying the premiums? Um, you know, we had, we had a, a really bad fire here in San Diego, maybe 10 years ago, and a whole bunch of homes got wiped out. I mean, fire jumped the freeway and it just, you know, it was right there in, you know, sort of a neighborhood area where wildfire was burning all these homes. And um, a lot of those people found themselves to be underinsured. And so while they got to build a new house and had insurance to help, they got stuck because they didn't have as much money as they thought they did in insurance coverage because the policy they had purchased was 10 years old or five years old or whatever, and they just been renewing it. Wow. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. You know, we'll call and say, hey, do you have a trust? Um, you know, if, if you do, let's make sure that title is properly held in that trust. If you don't, let's consider getting you a trust. We, we don't sell trusts, but we do sell service and we do care about our customers. So we call to the database. We do mailers. Um, I do seven or so mailers per year. Okay. Um, and again, those mailers are not, hey, call us now while you can sort of thing. They're generally more geared towards something that might be going on um, or something that might be you know, unique to the market at that time. Um, right. So we do a, a lot about national lending in those mailers, um, but we're also you know, sending also just kind of uh, celebratory you know, letters regarding the 4th of July or Christmas or, or whatever. It's, it's really just being top of mind. And then social media, um, it, you know, is something that I know you're absolutely, you know, a rock star in. We interact with our customers and try to be as organic as possible. Um, as much time as we might spend recording video and posting video and things like that. Um, again, I use an approach that is a little bit more uh, a little softer, I think, and we're interacting with our customers and what they're doing and what's important in their lives and what they're posting about. Um, so we're spending time going through their feed uh, or going through our news, news feed and commenting on um, what's going on with them. You know, beautiful baby, uh, can't believe that wedding dress, you know, whatever, um, making comments like that, liking stuff. And, and it's really kind of fun because we get to see, you know, some pretty big things that are happening in people's lives. Uh, whether it be celebrating a grandchild or, you know, in some cases it might be the loss of a loved one or something like that. And so we interact with them and we're present and we show that we care and we send gifts and we send cards and, and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's not just marketing. It's also really genuinely getting to be in touch with our database so that it, it feels very, we feel very connected and they do the same. That is so refreshing to hear, Corey. It's oftentimes that uh, it's a transactional business sometimes, right. and a lot of businesses treat it that way. Mm -hmm. And to see you really building those relationships and also to see the dividends that real true relationships with your database make, that's uh, incredible. And congratulations on that. Thank you. Now, um, you've given us two real golden nuggets there. I mean, first the script that you lend everywhere and then second reaching out and having a reason to reach out to the database every single time that you do it. Those are two incredibly valuable tips for our listeners here today. So skipping from the database marketing side of things, where are you getting the rest of the business from? Are you getting a lot of realtor referrals? What does that part of the business look like? Yeah, you know, it kind of seems to rotate a little bit. Um, certainly, we've got, you know, a lot of realtor partners and we love those partners and enjoy working with them. Uh, we have a lot of financial planning partners as well. Um, I would say, you know, that's as much of our business, if not more um, of our business than even realtor business. Um, you know, I tend to uh, kind of align real well with, with uh, the typical financial advisor in terms of how they operate their business and and things like that. So um, those are two big sources. The database is is the other big one. And you know, when we look at the sort of the analytics of our referrals, um, it'll be one year. It'll be mostly realtor, or not mostly, but I guess by a larger percentage. And then you know, financial planning and database are number two and number three. And and then the next year it'll be one of the others. But for the most part, I would say it's kind of a third, a third, a third. 
database, financial advisors, realtor, when you look at it over maybe the course of a year, a little bit larger scope, that ten, tends to be how it works out, which I really am proud of. I don't, I, I don't want to have my eggs in any one basket, at, yeah. you know, in anything. Um, I also don't do only large loans. I, you know, we do HELOCs, we, we do mobile homes. I mean, we do whatever we've got to do in order to help people, um, you know, get what they want, you know, yeah. and we don't turn our nose up at anything and understand that sometimes the littlest things become the biggest things. Um, and sometimes the biggest things aren't all they are cracked up to be. So we're just kind of um, trying to do as much as possible all the time and connect with as many people as possible. And generally speaking, it seems that that, that helps us win. Yeah. And so you mentioned financial advisors and being inclusive. I love that as well, because some people will, uh, you know, to take a drastic extreme of that, like we're a refi shop and we want to do 80% of our business refi. So we, we don't, we're not interested in the purchase business. I think being open to all of it is again, you are relationship based with your clients. You just want to help your clients with the loan that's necessary for them, which is incredible mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you talk about the purchase refinance split, which is a common sort of um, topic that comes up, you know, how, yeah, yeah. But how much of that is refi or whatever? Yeah. Um, you know, to me, you know, if you're in a 50, 50 sort of spot or close to that, that's pretty healthy. Um, when someone tells me that they're, you know, sort of, they're beating their chest about how they do, you know, 99% purchase, um, you know, the only thing that crosses my mind is what you're missing. Um, now if you're doing, you know, 99% refi, I, I would have the same thought, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we should be taking care of our customers, you know, 100% of the time and, and helping them in all facets. Um, if you're doing a bunch of purchase business and you're not, you know, contacting your clients to help them with a refinance when the opportunity comes up, you're not only missing an opportunity to, you know, do another loan and 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 get paid, um, but perhaps more importantly, you're missing an opportunity to be of service to your customer. That's right. um, and so you are now losing future opportunity to be of service to them on everything else that they may do in their, you know, financial or real estate, you know, life. Um, and so, you know, we're always about, you know, sort of just making sure we're serving people, you know, this last couple of years has been exceptionally busy and, you know, there are people that say to me like, Hey, why don't you, you know, take a day off or why don't you relax a little bit and, and go home early or whatever it might be. And, you know, I'm not sitting here thinking well, you know, come on, I want to have the best year of my career. I'm really not thinking that way. I'm really thinking like, well, I have an obligation. Uh, when I, when I closed this loan for this purchase customer, you know, a year ago, I told them that I would watch out for them. And if an opportunity came up to help them, that I would bring that up to them. And for me to just say, well, you know, I can't do that for everybody is really not, in my opinion, not really okay. It's not what I promised. It's not what I want to be known for. Um, and I think that that's a big miss in our industry is that, you know, we kind of say, well, you know, they'll call if they need something. It's on us to take care of our, take care of our customers. They're counting on us to do that. That's right. I, I, mean, I could not agree more, Corey. That is so valuable. Now, you mentioned another relationship, which is financial planners. And mm -hmm. I meet a lot of loan officers that struggle to open up those relationships, have those conversations. Do you have any tips for our listeners that are looking to get business from financial planners? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to understand what, what a financial planner is, is, is looking for, what's important to them, yeah. why they sometimes hesitate. Uh, to re refer um, to, to loan officers. And, you know, if you don't know how to do that, I'll give you some tips here, but, but also, Hey, ask them, you know, <laughs> um, this is something that I think loan officers oftentimes miss. They want to, to guess what other people want and then provide that. And then they're bummed out when they, when it maybe didn't work the way that it, it could have or should have in the eyes of whoever it is they're servicing. Right. Yep. So here's a, here's a tip, <laughs> ask them, what they want right and then give them that you know yeah. it, it, um to me it's so much easier if you go that route you know and same is true for realtors and by the way i ask every customer this question tell me what is important to you well corey it's really important to me that i don't have to worry and that i get a text message every friday that tells me where i am because i'm a nervous nelly and if i don't hear anything i'm freaking out <laughs> done i can text you it's not a big deal my office will text you every friday you know <laughs> But I, if I'm guessing, I don't like text messaging as a, as a customer, I don't like it. Yep. So if I'm guessing, then I'm like, 
don't tax me. You know, I'll tell you if I need something, you know, I'd appreciate it if you just let me know if something goes wrong. That's my mindset. As right. a customer. So if I'm guessing, I'm going to get it wrong, you know, 75% of the time yeah. because everybody's different, right? <laughs> so, so you have to understand that the financial planner is a bit of a different animal. You know, they don't want to be um, sort of latched on to, you know, they want to be known as someone who runs a very professional, and I'm not going to call it a business, I'm going to call it a practice, okay? Because that's the term that they would use uh, oftentimes. So, you know, they want to be viewed as a professional and a sort of a, a financial expert. Now, say what you want about, you know, financial advisors. Some people say, oh, they're salespeople or whatever. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. Um, but I can tell you that financial planners, I think, hold themselves in a little higher regard than, you know, some other industries that loan officers tend to maybe partner with. So you have to acknowledge that, you know, you have to, you have to maybe speak a little differently. You maybe have to dress a little differently. Um, you, you have to kind of, um, it, maybe it's a little more old school, right? Um, you have to make sure you keep them in the loop and that at every opportunity that you're making them look good. So, yeah. um, you know, some things we do for every customer, regardless if we work with their financial advisor or not. I mean, this is like an old Tim Brahim tip from 2003 that I've been doing for 18 years is, you know, we're sending uh, closing statements out to CPAs and financial advisors at every opportunity. We're not waiting for them to ask, hmm. you know, so we're going to the customer and we're saying, hey, do you have a financial advisor? Do you have a CPA? They say, yes, great. Would you mind sharing that contact information with us so that we can inform your partners on what's going on? You know, they may not even be involved. Sometimes they say, I didn't even tell them I'm buying a house. All right, well, we're going to send them an email. We're going to say, hey, you may or may not realize this, but Mr. and Mrs. Customer has purchased a home. This is their new uh, address. This is the closing statement. You know, this may be beneficial come tax time. Keep it in your file, right? It's super easy to do. And they're like, wow, like no one does that. I have to always like bug the client for it. The client can't find it because it happened eight months ago. They're calling an escrow company from actually the wrong transaction and no one can get it, you know? So speaking their language, you know, and, and planning and being ahead and being professional, these are things that loan officers tend not to do. Real estate agents tend not to do, but financial planners tend to really be on top of And so if you can work the way they like to work, you know, it's so easy for them to go, yep, that's, that's the guy. You know, that is amazing. Corey, that tip right there on just putting together those closing documents, finding out the information of the financial planner and then proactively sending the documents. I mean, that right there, a third golden nugget. That's incredible. Well, the funny part is, is that when they don't have the financial advisor and they don't have the CPA, then you open up a whole nother app. Right. So so now it's well, you've bought a home. You may want to consider doing this. Right. Or you've got two children that are age seven and four, you should probably connect with a financial advisor so that you can make sure you're doing things right. Um, yeah. And, and you know, that your sort of own personal strategy is not just, well, we'll see what happens, right? Um, so then you have the opportunity to connect, right? And, and refer, um, which is great because if you're a loan officer and you can refer these these individuals these professionals then you may open up a relationship with with them that is is different than it would have otherwise been but again let's not lose sight of what's really valuable you know our customers should have good financial advice they That's should right. have you know a financial advisor and if you own a home and you don't have a trust and you own a home and you're not taking advantage of the tax benefits and you own a home but you're not putting your money in the right place and you're maybe paying down your mortgage and not saving for college or whatever you could be you could be kind of doing it the wrong way, you know, and we owe it to our customers to connect them with people that can help them make these decisions and, and navigate through life. And by the way, if they do that and they win, you'll probably do, do another loan down the road. That is uh, that is amazing and very sage advice, Corey. And thank you again for being so generous with your time today. Now, if there's a, a loan officer that's listening to this or potentially a real estate partner that is listening to this and going, wow, man, Corey's running an amazing business. I'd love to connect with them. What's the best way for people to connect with you? Um, I, 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 yeah, you can email or call. And those are probably the, the, the best ways to, to reach me. 
Um, so, um, you want, do you want me to provide information here? Is that, or are you as gonna... long as you're comfortable with yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll also have it in the show notes. But... Okay, cool. Yeah. So my, my number is 619-554-1327. Um, and then my email is K O R Y. So Corey at C M G F I.com like C M G financial.com. Awesome. That is very helpful. Corey, I would love to have you on the show again at a future date to talk about the other side of the transaction. You've done an incredible job unpacking how to bring the business in the door, but you seem very astute at investing and wealth building and all of that sort of stuff. I'd love to have a conversation with you about investing and, uh, and what loan officers should be doing with their money once they get it, if you'd be Absolutely. open to it. Happy to do that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, again, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, for all of our listeners, don't forget to head on over to iTunes, leave us a five-star rating and review so that we can get more incredible guests like Corey. Perfect. Thanks so much, Corey. Thanks, Chris. Hey, it's Chris Johnstone. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. I hope that you loved it and got incredible value from it. Right now, it's time to head on over to iTunes and leave your five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. When you do, you will be entered into our monthly draw to receive an Amazon gift card. So go ahead, leave that review today. It also helps us attract top talent and really get incredible interviews lined up for you so that we can share even more value for you. Now, for the show notes, and for all of the resources that were mentioned in this episode, you can head on over to loanofficerwealth.com. That's loanofficerwealth.com. You get access to all the show notes from all the episodes, all the past episodes, get notified of new episodes when they drop, and we've also got some very special bonuses for you over on that page when you opt in. So head on over and opt in today, and we look forward to sharing the next episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast with you soon.